Welcome to Capella Academy. Have you heard this piece? Likely you have. It's Johann Sebastian Bach's iconic Toccata and Fugue in D minor. The Toccata probably is the most famous organ piece ever written. But what do we know about the fugue? We might remember from music class that a fugue starts with a single voice. Then a second voice enters and maybe even a third and a fourth. A bit like in a canon. But what makes up a fugue and how is it constructed? To answer this question we could analyze the complex masterpieces by Bach. But let's not do that today. Instead let's build a simple fugue together so everyone can follow along. Let's get started. A fugue has multiple voices. In our first fugue, two voices should be enough. We can choose which voice to start with. Let's go with the lower one. The melody that starts the fugue is called the subject. It is the main theme of a fugue. A good theme should be easily recognizable. How do you like this one? The subject is the nucleus of the whole fugue, the core of the composition from which the music can grow. The subject will be heard multiple times. This is what makes a fugue so appealing. The subject is explored from different angles, so it always sounds fresh and unexpected. The second voice still has a pause and is waiting to enter. In a canon it would exactly repeat the melody of the first voice, starting on the same pitch. In a fugue, however, the second voice starts on a different pitch, usually a fifth above the first voice. This can be thought of as an answer to the subject. If the answer is exactly the same as the subject, we call it a real answer. However, usually the subject will get slightly modified. This allows the melody to fit better into the key and makes the music flow more smoothly. In our example, the melody ends on the root note C in order to allow for a chord in the tonic C major at this position. This kind of modified subject is called a tonal answer. The second voice has now entered the stage. What should the first voice do now? The answer is simple. Accompany the other voice. But how? Here is a first attempt. The simplest way to accompany another voice is to follow it in parallel motion. This sounds rather uninspired, right? The basic idea of a fugue is that all voices are independent and equally important. No voice is subordinate to another. One way to achieve this is to use contrary motion. When one voice moves up, the other voice moves down and vice versa. Of course, you have to make sure to keep the harmonies intact. You can create an even more independent accompaniment by modifying the rhythm. Here we vary the rhythm of the second voice. In some places it differs from the rhythm of the first voice. This principle is called counterpoint. A section of a fugue that uses counterpoint is referred to as counter subject if it appears alongside the subject several times. If the contrasting melody is used just once and the subject has different accompaniments, it is called free counterpoint. The beginning of our fugue is now complete.
this section of the first entry of the voices with subject, answer and counterpoint is called the exposition or first development. It is usually followed by more development sections with entries of the subject and its answer. We are free to choose how many development sections we want to compose. In our example, we'll add two more after the exposition and link them with transitions. Then, after the last development, we'll add a short closing section to conclude the fugue. Now let's examine the other development sections. Generally, they follow the same structure as the exposition. However, to keep things interesting, we'll vary each development section a bit. We don't want to bore our listeners after all. An example will illustrate this. In our second development section, the upper voice starts out with the subject. The subject is not in the tonic key of C major, but in the parallel key of A minor. The answer is then heard in the lower voice. As in the first development section, it starts a fifth above the subject, in this case with an E. To ensure that the lower voice is not higher than the upper one, it is transposed down by an octave. The answer is accompanied by a free counterpoint. Instead of being played alone, the subject is also given its own counterpoint. This is our second development. In the third development section, we continue our variation game. The lower voice starts on an F. The answer, once more a fifth above the subject, begins on a C and elegantly leads the harmony back to the tonic of the fugue. Combined with the counterpoints, it sounds like this. The next question is, how do we move from the end of one development section to the beginning of the next? We write a transition section that links them together and is called an episode. This may sound boring at first. However, it can be quite exciting, as the episodes of a fugue offer most room for creativity. The most important task here is to change the key so that the next entry of the subject is harmonically prepared. Let's look at another little subject. The first few notes remind us of our main subject, but it has a unique feature. It can be repeated multiple times, with each repetition starting one tone lower than the previous one. Combined with an appropriate accompaniment, this creates a sequence. This is a straightforward way to change the key step by step. But we need to find the right way to finish the sequence, otherwise we risk disrupting the musical flow of the piece. If we mechanically continue our downward sequence in our example, both voices would have to jump way up to return to the starting point. That's pretty inelegant. Instead we break out of our pattern early and add a harmonic turn that confirms which key we are in. This is called a cadence. Here we use a cadence in A minor, because the next development section begins with an A. The cadence takes us to where we want to continue, the next section. If we combine our two-part sequence with the harmonic turn, our episode sounds like this. Using the same approach, we compose a second episode. After the last development section, we do not need to alter the key again. We can now compose an ending for our fugue, the coda. We confirm the home key once again with the cadence and conclude the fugue. Done. We have completed our little fugue. 
In just a moment, we will listen to the full piece. The sheet music in Capella is linked below this video for you to download. You can follow along while listening or make changes to the fugue later. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, write a comment or give it a like. Music theory is much more exciting than you might think. And now let's give a round of applause to our first homemade fugue.